Welcome to Let's Talk a Little Shop, a podcast created by ASD Market Week. Let's Talk a Little Shop aims to help small businesses navigate the rapidly changing retail landscape. Whether you own a brick and mortar store, are an online seller, or both, this podcast provides tangible strategies to keep your cash register ringing. Hello, everyone. It is Michaela, and I am back for another episode of Let's Talk a Little Shop on behalf of ASD Market Week. And this episode is one that's really close to my heart because this involves someone that our community knows, and she is moving on to the next phase of her life and uh, closing her stores, closing her retail coaching business, and, you know, embracing what's next. So, Because of what she's doing, I invited her on to talk to you firsthand. So, Chris, go ahead and take it away and uh, give give yourself a quick introduction, just in case someone doesn't know who you are. Uh, Well, hi, I'm Chris Willis, and I married into a fourth generation family of in the retail business. So, our store was Parsons. And we um, had been in the retail business for 142 years. And I would go to the ASD show, was big in Southwest um, Buying Group, and just um, loved, 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 loved retail, lived, eat, breathed retail. And then um, my husband and I had a new vision for our life, and we transitioned into, into coaching stores of taking all the data analytics and everything that we learned, and we were coaching stores. And that was wonderful. And we did that for years. And now um, we're transitioning again because we want to be even more mobile. So we're still coaching in some niche niche markets and um, going to be uh, traveling a lot in our motorhome as we keep going from phase to phase to phase of our retail life and career. <laughs> Awesome. So Chris, let's back up a couple years and talk about first closing the stores. So first, how did you come to that decision? After 142 years in business, that is huge. So how did you first make the decision to know that it was time to retire out of retail? Well, like I said, we were we were the fourth generation and we realized there was no fifth generation coming in. So we knew the business was going to end with us because we tried. There was nobody else coming in. So then we had to decide, well, when when will it end with us? And um, when the, the lease was coming up and we really started thinking about it, creating that vision of where do we you know, what do we want to do for the next five years of our life, next 10 years? Um, we just came to the realization that it was time and and we were done and ready to move on to not being um, as tied down. um, And we wanted to be more mobile and said, buy that motor home and travel and see the beautiful US of A. So once you guys had made that decision to close the stores, what was the actual process of closing the store like? Like, what did you have to do in order to make that a reality? Well, I can tell you making the decision, I mean, I sit here and talk about it kind of lightly. It was one of the hardest, most stressful times of my life that I've ever been through. I mean, a family business, fourth generation, um, the community was shocked. It was, it's a really hard decision to make. And I work with clients all the time. So we're closing their stores who've said the same thing that just emotionally it, it, it's hard. Um, and once you make the decision though, it really is, um, you know, a mindset of, you know, make it wonderful, make it, um, a celebration. And then, you know, when we first, cause we've had stores throughout, um, We've opened and closed stores throughout our 142 year history of the business. Mm -hmm. And my husband and I being in it for the 27, 28 years we were there. So we had hired somebody at first to help us. And once you really learn what to do, because you realize closing a store is like the biggest event you're ever going to have in that business. And you only get one shot at it, right? You know what, you know, you don't know what you don't know when you get started. So Um, hiring someone to help you walk you through it um, so that you can make the most of it to make it a wonderful event. 
But also, let's face it, we want to be we want to make it a money making event. Right. We want to make the most money possible. And so I highly recommend having someone help you through it, because afterwards, when you realize everything you should have done, it's too late. (laughs) So for someone starting that journey, what are some of those steps specifically as it relates to like, let's start with the, the bigger thing, liquidating merchandise. Yeah. So, you know, part of the, the, the big part of closing your store and making mm-hmm. it successful is really the marketing of it. You've got to make it a big buzz. It's the biggest event you've ever had and okay. inventory management. Everyone's yeah. always so concerned about getting rid of all their merchandise. And yeah. they always are shocked when I'm the first one usually tell them to come like, we need to buy some more merchandise. And they're like, what? So there's a whole inventory management plan that we go through to make it the most successful. And if you get the marketing right and you do all the things um, and you make it a big splash, the people will come out. I keep telling people it's almost like like the mentality of a wake or um, a view like the community loves their local stores and and when the store is going out of business they they hurt like there's a loss and they want to all come together and Mm -hmm. and be together and it's just amazing how but you got to let everybody know and then Mm -hmm. and then they come and they buy so the big tip is you need to do your sale during whatever your busiest time of the year is when people are already shopping for your product, which could be different because if you're a dancewear mm-hmm. store, that's different from if you're like a bookstore versus a boutique clothing store mm-hmm. or a pet shop, you know, you might have different, you know, different timing, but that's when people are shopping. That's when people are buying. Most people think I'm going to get through my busy time and then do it. And that's not what I recommend. So having someone that can lead you and guide you, it's just, there's, those are some of the things that inventory management and having the right product, which let's face it in retail, what do you just have? You just to have the right amount of product at the right time that your customers want. So it's still some of those same, um, you know, concepts, but you're going to do so much more business during that time period. So you, you know, got to get more utilize business. that. And then this is also where you need to get some great closeout deals. So hopefully you've, you know, worked with a bunch of great ASD vendors that have um, some great deals they can they can get you. So let's dig a little bit more into that because I've never heard that before. So first, you're saying bring in more merchandise and look for closeouts to fill. So look at it not as, oh, I'm going out of business, I'm closing, but this is my last hurrah to make even more cash. So right. take me into that a little bit more, Chris, because that is mind blowing. <laughs> You know, and I mean, we used to do this years ago in our store. We called it the extravaganza sale and we would close the store for a day, paper up the windows. We would buy closeouts galore from places and we would have, you know, everything on sale for this like weekend only. We made so much money because we would buy all these closeouts and bring them in and mark them up to mark them down. And people were like, this is great extravaganza sale. You know, we did that for years back in the like, 80s and 90s and and it was such a um, uh, you know a gimmick and it worked great and basically it's kind of the same thing when you're well, you know we realized when we we're closing a store um you got to make it it's the biggest event you've you're ever going to have so you um you you know and you want to make money so what you you know you buy low and you sell it high right that's how we make money and if you can get the people in the door because you do all the marketing right you just it's a perfect storm and you can create and look you know a lot of cash in closing your store it's not just put your entire store on sale and just hopefully and just kind of liquidate it like you think Um, and people do do that And they're just leaving money on the table. Okay. And so, Chris, what are some of the types of marketing messages that you use to to your shoppers in order to kind of get them to come out in that mass since it is your last hurrah? Right. And I think the one of my big proponents is mailing a letter. Most people will tell me, like a lot of my clients, some of them will tell me, like I don't, I don't have a mailing list, and I'm like, what? I mean, of course. 
when I'm coaching a store just on a regular basis, one of my big things is you got to have a mailing list. You can't just rely on email. You can't just rely on Facebook and Instagram. Those things are all wonderful. You have to have that, but you need their mailing address and their physical address. You just, you know, Things can go away. I've had I've had clients who have like been shut down on Instagram for some reason and they just lost that everything they've built is gone. So, you know, all that technology is great until it's not. So having their uh, mailing address is so important. I'm a big proponent of direct mail. Always was as a retailer, always use direct mail. So one of the first questions I ask anybody, any of my new clients for a store closing is, you know, do you have a mailing list? And so sending that letter is the best way to let everybody know. We all know that not everybody sees every Facebook post or Instagram post and not everybody opens and reads every email you send. But people only get junk mail in the mail these days or or election ads during the mail. So they get so excited if they got a letter from from their um, local store that they love and then really letting people know, just telling them you know, that you're closing is like you know, with a heavy heart letting them know they're closing, that everything must go, um, liquidation sale, but um, mailing out a letter really helps. Then you still got to do all the rest. You know, people say, oh, well, I don't do newspaper anymore. I'm like, you know what? This is one of those times when, you know, yes, if there's a low, you got to do, you got to create the buzz and get everyone there. And, um, and it will, the, the people will come. I love it. I love it. So, you know, in, in terms of, you know, that's, that's a very different viewpoint. So making this your, your, you know, you're going out in style type of thing. Mm -hmm. Is there any way to partner with um, local businesses that might have shared customers in order to make it even more successful? Yes. You know, I was always, as a retailer, a big proponent of doing, working with charities and other businesses in the area. So we always had a thing called Parsons on Mission. So every month we were highlighting some some charity or mission in the area. So when it came time to closing the store, I wanted to work with other people and, um, and, and do that. So like we would give away door prizes, right? So I might want to promote that, like come in this weekend and you can register to get this hundred dollar gift certificate to this wonderful steakhouse. And I would go and work with the steakhouse and say, Hey, I'm going to promote you in my, this letter I'm mailing out. I'm going to promote you on my Instagram, my emails, and I'm sending out blah, blah, blah. And you're going to get all this. And so, you know, if you'll give me a free $100 gift certificate, then we're going to you know promote that. So then, um, but I also tell them like, you could tell everybody you should go to, um, to this store this weekend and you could win a gift certificate to, um, to our steakhouse, things like that. Also with all the charities, you can do um, diaper drives and pet food drives and canned food drives and every weekend so that um, they're also telling everyone, you know, come to the store and, and donate and you will get an additional, you know, 5% off or 10% off an item. So working together. Um, and the other thing I would always recommend is if there's other retailers in your area, what happens so many times is people say, well, where am I going to shop now? You are where I bought all my clothes or where I bought all mm -hmm. my. So this is a great time to highlight all of those other businesses. So I invited all the other businesses that sold anything similar to us into the store. And each week when I did my emails, I would have a video that I made with them and say, hey, everyone always wants to know where they're going to buy their jewelry now. And then I would yeah. have them, you know, tell about their store. And so then they would always want to share that video with all of their friends to see them. And then their customers would come in and buy stuff. So anyway, getting as many people as involved as possible is the best way to do it. You want to go out with a bang and everyone loving you. I love that. I love that. And so, Chris, um, in terms of, you know, kind of that that inner well-being and finding your next, like mm -hmm. when someone has decided to close their store and they've gone through some of these steps to liquidate merchandise and make it a big going away party, mm -hmm. um, what, what do you advise them to kind of do after that? Like, can they sit with themselves and kind of figure out, what is that next thing for them? Like, what does that look like? What does that look, what, what kind of happened there with you? 
Well, and one thing I always, um, I coach store owners to do this anyway, but especially when we're starting a store closing, if they don't really, you know, have it and everyone's closing, there's different reasons. People have like all of a sudden mm -hmm. sold a building they weren't planning to sell, but they had an offer they couldn't refuse. So they're closing this business, deciding what their next phase is. People have lost mm -hmm. their lease. I mean, there's a plethora of different reasons why somebody's closing. But here's the thing is, everybody's going to close. You're going to leave your business at some point, right? You're going to hand it down. Yeah. You're going to sell it. You're going yeah. to close it or you're going to die. But either everyone's going to leave their business <laughs> at some point and you want to kind of leave it on your own terms. So having some sort of an exit strategy in mind and creating your vision for yourself is something you need to do like every three to five years and just sit down and write your vision for your life. Choose that time period. If it's going to be five years from now, um, three years from now and sit down and write it like you're there. Like it's yep. three years from now and I'm sitting on, you know, if your dream was like, you know, I've always wanted to go to the mountains or I've wanted to own a mountain house or the lake, or I want to, you know, spend, I want to be able to spend a month on the beach. That's my dream. Whatever that is. And you're like, Oh, I'm sitting here right now, uh, you know, looking out over the ocean and the sunset is beautiful as I reflect back on the last three years and everything that I've been able to do. And, you know, I'm so excited that I was able to, you know, run that marathon or, you know, help my daughter do this or, you know, buy a motor home. And I've been to, you know, we've been to 10 states. There's no right or wrong. You just have to do, like you said, like sit with yourself and, or, and with your spouse or your family and go, what is it? What is my passion? Where do I want to be? And maybe as a retailer, your passion is I want to own five stores in the next 10 years. It's got to be realistic. You know, don't yeah. like, yeah. you know, I'm never going to be like the center guard for the NBA, right? Like that's not ever realistic for me, but don't worry exactly about how you're going to get it. Just be real and come up with that, that, that dream, that vision, and then write it with a lot of adjectives. Like it's really there almost like then you can like post that on your mirror so that you can look at that every day and say, this is yeah. where I'm going. Whether it's, I want to have three stores or maybe you own 15 stores and you're like, you know what? Five stores would be a lot easier. My goal is to get down to just five stores, or maybe it's, I want to yeah. retire in the mountains. There's no right or wrong answer. It's whatever's right for you. And so if somebody's closing and they haven't really done that, that's where we start. It's time to envision what brings you joy, what brings you peace, what what fills your passions. And um, so, yeah, a lot of my even store closings, there's a lot of psychology that goes into that, too. So there's a lot of coaching on on helping people through what sometimes can be a really tough time for them or what can mm -hmm. be like a really super exciting time. I love it. So, Chris. Where are you headed to next on your adventures in your motorhome? Oh, goodness. Well, I think in February, we're heading to Florida because it'll be a lot warmer down there. Yep. But then I have to stick close to home because I have my first grandbaby coming early March. Oh, so we will do a lot of um, here in the North Georgia mountains or North Carolina, Tennessee and Florida, um, staying closer to home, heading going to the lakes. Um, and then uh, we'll have a big trip out west in the fall. So we'll be gone for several months then. That's amazing. Well, Chris, thank you for coming on the show today to kind of give those last minute tips. You've always been such a huge supporter of our community and our retailers that, you know, I am just grateful to you for letting us be the last conversation you had. I mean, I, I it's been so many years and you've just been such a huge influence on ASD that, you know, I'm going to miss you as will our entire team, but we are so happy that you guys are moving on to the next in a way that supports your, your, your goals and health and everything else. Yes. No, we're excited. So we're still, um, you know, still doing some inventory management for people and, um, and coaching people through successful store closings through our business, um, Retail Clarity, so retailclarity.com. It's where you can reach me. And um, and I just love um, sharing knowledge and just, you know, everyone just, you know, it's always, we need to be, you know, always learning. And I love sharing what, what, what knowledge I have on certain topics and then learning lots about topics I know nothing about, so. I love it. Thank you, Chris. All righty, thank you so much. Thanks for listening. To learn more, visit ASD Market Week at asdonline.com. 
To listen to more great episodes, be sure to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, or Spotify, and make sure to rate us too. Music